Hi everyone, welcome to Mr. Carlson's shop. I guess you could say it's part of Mr. Carlson's lab. For those of you that are new to this channel, normally I'm in Mr. Carlson's lab, but today I'm out in the shop and I have a story to share with you. I get the question many times, Paul, tell us a little bit more about your life. Or Mr. Carlson, Mr. C, whatever, tell me more about your life. You can call me Paul, by the way. So nice to meet you if you're new to the channel and if you're returning, welcome back. So this is a story, how I got shocked within an inch of my life, all right? This is a really bad electric shock that I got when I was a lot younger. So I'm very, very careful around electricity and I always have been careful around electricity. In my teens, I was building high powered RF amplifiers with a uh, pole pig transformers. So those are the transformers that are on the pole outside of your house and basically they're hooked in reverse. So you put in 240 and you get high voltage out of the secondary. I used to build RF amps with those things and I used to wind my own filament transformers and, and things like that as well. So I've been doing this for a long time. So I was working on a DAC radio. So this is a citizens band radio. This is what the radio looks like here. All right, so that's a DAC. It's not the exact DAC that, uh, that uh, bit me, but uh, this is what the radio looks like. So this radio had failed and it's kind of a common failure point with those the capacitors go bad, diodes go bad in the power supply. And what ends up happening is the uh, transformer goes away inside. So since the transformer go went away in this, I wanted to substitute the transformer with a power supply that I had just to do some testing on it. And that is this power supply right here. You'll see in the back, it's a Lambda power supply. It's got the two meters on it, kind of center screen right there. So that was attached into this radio and I'm sitting at my workbench and the DAC radio was at, attached to a dummy load at the time, which is a fake antenna for those of you that don't know what a dummy load is. So basically it's, it's a, just a resistive load that's attached to the coaxial jack in the back. So that's all attached in the back of the radio and I've got the power supply attached into the back of the radio and all these wires going in there and I have a microphone on that radio as well. So the microphone is a D104 or a lollipop style microphone with a push to talk switch on the side. This is one of the earlier ones. It didn't have the push to talk on the base. It was just on the side of the D104. Or for those of you that are into uh, CB radios, the D104 uh, microphone, all right? So anyways, so I'm working on the radio. I grab the microphone and all of a sudden, my body's humming, all right? It feels like, if you've ever heard 60 or 120 cycle hum, your body feels like it's vibrating like that. Even when you have DC pass through you, your body feels like it's vibrating at a fast rate. It feels like, feels like I guess, what you would hear when you hear 60 cycle hum. It's kind of hard to explain, or, or maybe 120 cycle hum. Uh, at this point, it really doesn't matter, but there's DC going through me somehow. And I'm, I'm holding onto the microphone and I can feel this and my whole body shaking. I can think perfectly clear as this is happening and I'm, I'm being shocked incredibly bad. And I'm thinking that to myself at this time. I'm thinking, wow, this is a really incredible shock. I have to let go of this microphone. I'm thinking that at that point, I'm thinking it's coming through the mic because I'm, I, I don't know where the connection is. So, I try to let go of the, of the D104 and I can't let go of the mic, which is unusual for direct current, right? You know, AC makes, you, makes your muscles tense up like that. So this is very unusual. So I'm holding onto the microphone and I'm thinking, if I don't let go of this thing, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna live. And, and I can feel it, right? I'm shaking and I can, I, I can it, it, it feels like there's ants all over your body. It feels like you're just covered in bugs and they're just crawling all over you as this is happening. It's a really very strange sensation. Uh, and of course, this was going across my heart. So I don't know where the other connection was to this day, but it did burn a hole in my hand. That microphone from that microphone, it burnt a hole. I have a cartilage ball in my hand right here. So it's, it's, it's quite the ball. And anyways, so I'm on this mic, you know, I, I, I'm holding onto this mic and I'm, I'm like, I gotta get, I gotta let go of this. I'm like, what am I gonna do? If I, 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 you know, and I'm thinking this and I'm like, what am I gonna do? And I'm just sitting there, I'm convulsing and I'm thinking I'm gonna pass. And then, the, now keep in mind that nothing is around me. 
I'm completely alone at this point. Something shoved me out of the chair I was sitting in and I don't know what it was, but something pushed me right out of the chair. I went flying. Uh, I pulled the radio, the, D, the actual DAC came down and you saw how big that radio is. It's a big radio. It came off the bench, I pulled the D104 down. I had, I was using, it was very common for me to use old tube caddies as tool kits back then because they're great tool kits. So my tube caddy with, with some tools on it was on the floor beside me and they, you know how they fold open, you can put the, the tubes in each side of it and they kind of fold shut like this. So the, the doors were open, I fell on it, I busted the doors right off of my tool kit and um, I, I landed kind of, I guess my chest was on the toolkit at like over top of it. So I, I kind of, I guess I busted one door off here and one door with my, my arms here because I kind of landed over it crossways. And as I'm on the ground, I'm just, I, I, I don't know what I was, probably semi-conscious. And, and I, my whole body, as I was disconnected, it didn't feel like I was disconnected. I was still buzzing as I was on the ground and I'm not hooked up to anything and I was still buzzing and then that buzzing subsided and I could feel my, my heart wasn't beating. I could actually feel that. That is a very strange sensation. I could feel a quivering in my chest but it wasn't my heart and then all of a sudden as I'm laying there and I'm just about to pass out, you can probably hear this because my mic's on my chest, my heart was just shaking and then all of a sudden And it raced incredibly fast. My heart went incredibly fast. And I'm like gasping for air. I'm on the, I'm on the floor and, I, and my vision's blurry. I'm gasping for air. And I laid there and I kind of got my senses straight. I managed to pick myself up and I walked down the hall to the washroom, looked in the mirror and I was white as a sheet of paper. Uh, just completely white. My hands were white. My face was white. Everything was white. And I uh, kind of uh, felt peaked. So I sat down and I kind of settled off for a little while, just, just sat there and just relaxed. Now this is early in the morning. Uh, it's been common for me most of my life to work late into the evenings. And um, at this point, when I was really young, I was working late into the evenings. And uh, after this had, I, I kind of, I guess, came to, and you know, uh, what would the word be, settled, settled down, uh, drank a big glass of water, and I was scared to go to sleep. It was that bad. And you know, and of course I looked at my hand and I have a hole, it wasn't bleeding, but it's cauterized hole in my hand. And now there's just a, a, a big cartilage ball. I don't, you can't, really can't see that on camera. I'm too far away, but it's quite the ball and it's still in there. I can feel it. And um, anyways, you know, I'm looking at my hand and going, wow. And, I, and to this day, I still don't know where the actual shock came from. I, I, I don't know other than holding that D104, there had to be a path through my body. Now the chair that I was sitting in, it was kind of a, a, a red, uh, red kind of a cloth covered chair, but it had metal on it. And there was metal around the bottom, kind of like where my feet are here. There's kind of metal down there, you know? So maybe my leg was interlocked into that and a, an alligator clip from the power supply or something fell down and touched that. Because again, I couldn't let go and I couldn't move. I was just stuck. And that's the only one time I've ever been electrocuted and I've been, I guess I should say shocked. The only time I've ever been shocked and I've actually been stuck. Like I couldn't let go of the mic. I couldn't move. It was just holding me there. And um, that was a very scary feeling. So you always wonder on my channel, many of you always wonder on my channel, why do I talk about safety so much and warn everybody about the, you know, the dangers of being shocked when working on electronics? And now you know why. And that's only one story. I have a, a bunch of other close calls that I've had and uh, they're pretty serious as well. Again, remember, I used to build very large high powered RF amplifiers and I, you know, dealing with very large transformers that supply an immense amount of current at uh, 7,500 volts, things like that. And they have huge filter banks of capacitors. Uh, one of the amplifiers I built had two capacitors that were this big and had two big porcelain insulators on the top, big capacitors, big oil filled caps in the, in the bottom of the actual, uh, uh, of the uh, amplifier. So, Anyways, if you know the, the amount of current and the amount of storage that's in those capacitors alone is, is very, very scary. So 
a couple of close calls. Uh, this is the, the one really, really bad one, I would say, that, um, again, just about took my life. So that's why I talk about safety so much, and I push it. I, I talk a lot about safety. I warn every time I'm in a video and I'm working on something, I always warn people to be very, very safe, and that's why. I know some of you say, oh, Paul, you know, we don't need to hear this again. You know, you're, you're too overcautious. Well, if you've ever been shocked within an inch of your life, uh, you'd be probably saying the same thing as well. And again, I have more stories. And I have some uh, stories about just other things in life that um, I had a, some very close calls with, um, just uh, not dealing with electricity, but dealing with mechanical objects as well. So I will share some of those stories in another Shop Talk episode. So I hope you enjoyed this little story and uh, a little bit more about my life when I was younger. So um, now I'm extremely careful. Uh, as it, I was extremely careful back then. I still don't know how that happened, but uh, now I'm, I'm way more cautious even still. I can't tell you the last time I was shocked. It's been such a long time, so I'm very, very careful. And I talk a lot about that everywhere. Even I have an electronics course on Patreon and I push, you know, the safety up there as well as down here. So, you know, if you're not going to hear it here, you're going to hear it there. There's just no if, whys, or buts. I've built some high voltage power supplies up there as well with plans and everything. And um, I've even printed right on the circuit boards that I've designed high voltage with an arrow pointing to the point. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very cautious now. And I will keep being cautious and I will keep warning all of you about electricity if you're playing with anything that's any vacuum tube gear, any of the stuff that you see around me here. All this stuff has high voltage inside of it. All these old radios up that you see up on the top and all of these oscilloscopes and this test gear, all of it has extremely high voltage in it and at some pretty high currents as well. So uh, this is the stuff that I deal with on this channel. And of course I design modern stuff as well. You've seen the capacitor tester that I've designed and a foil side tester and I've designed a uh, CNC SIP, the signal injection probe and the super probe and all that stuff. I've designed all that stuff too. I designed solid state and vacuum tube stuff. So at any rate, but um, I really like working on the old stuff. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a glutton for punishment. I, don't, I really don't know. So at any rate, I hope you enjoyed the story. And if you want to learn more about electronics and have access to my inventions and designs, which are, uh, well, they're out there. You can find many of my inventions and designs online all over the place. You can find people talking about them and, and all that stuff. But uh, if you want the plans and, and uh, all the uh, information about my designs, or if you just want to take part in an electronics course and learn maybe some things about electronics that you don't know, or if you just want to support the channel, definitely check out Patreon. There's many levels up there and levels that will also give you direct access to my personal email as well. So if you're in a very big project and you need some help with your project, you can always sign up to that level and I'll talk to you via email. So anyways, that's all over there. You can check that out. There's also about 170 videos there for you to enjoy as well. All right, I'll put the video or the link to uh, Patreon just below this video under the description, and I'll also pin the link at the uh, at the top of the uh, comment section. You can click on that, and that'll uh, take you directly to Patreon. You can check it out if you like. All right, until next time. Hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I'll have many more stories. I have lots and lots of interesting <laughs> stories. Some of the crazy things that I did when I was younger, and um, not so long ago as well. Bye for now.